Welcome to the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to support my daily eternal magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or my list and cyborg guides before tournaments, check out Patreon or the YouTube membership program. This channel is made possible by these amazing sponsors. Check out all their links in the video description below. Once again, thanks for being here. Let's go play some magic. Welcome back to another Bosch and Roll video. Today, I'm playing Modern. And before we get started, there is a crew of tree people in my front yard cutting down a giant dead tree. It was a mandate from the power company. I have no control over anything that's happening here, but it could be very loud. This is actually the third time I'm starting this video because the chainsaws ruined the first two takes, but I think they're on lunch or like grinding up small pieces right now. So I, I have a small window to start, but if any weird sounds happen in the background, I'm doing my best. Anyway, this is a brew challenge from Patreon subscriber Let Gabe. And Let Gabe wanted me to brew around Axis of Mortality, which is a card that I had never seen before. For White White Enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. This is a spicy build around if we've ever seen one. And it combos well with Phyrexian on life, because you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. If you're at negative one life and some number of poison counters and you switch life totals with your opponent they're at negative some number of life and you're still alive because you have on life and they don't that's one of the combos i basically had free reign to do whatever i wanted with axis of mortality and as the pieces started to come together it just made sense to have it be an enchantress deck because axis is itself an enchantment rexian on life is an enchantment Greater Oromancy was my first thought of how to protect them. And then I thought, how do I tutor these things up? And that gives us Sterling Grove or the Enchantresses can dig for them. It just, it just started to fall into place one piece at a time. Enchantress also luckily gives us a shell by which we can just kind of play normal magic as we get our hooks in one piece at a time. Sanctum Weaver is a card I was really excited to pair with these things because we're an enchantment-based engine, and Enchantment Weaver makes a buttload of mana to make all this happen. Other versions I considered, like a self-mill thing with Resurgent Belief, just throw the whole combo into play all at once, but then I couldn't figure out how to actually reduce my life total. Turns out that white is not actually very good in its color pie at paying life to get an effect. Adanto Vanguard was the one good thing I could find that's legal and modern where you could just pay life in multiples of four until you're at zero or close to it. Other than that, we basically had to dip into black. And even there, there was not like a a one life have some sort of effect kind of thing. There might be some on creatures, but in the enchantment shell, the various variants of greed are what I came up with. And Argwell's Bloodfast. One in a black, pay two life, draw a card. This is a sick engine. You can just delete your life total, feel yourself up on cards, and on life will be somewhere in that pile, I hope. And because we're already a tutor and protect our enchantments shell, Argwell's Bloodfast can be tutored and protected. Black mana can come from the Rafine's Tower, Abundant Growth, or Sanctum Weaver. Plenty of ways to do that if we want it. And I have another combo in here, alongside Axis of Mortality, there's also Solemnity. Players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. You know what poison is, mechanically? It's counters. If you have Phyrexian on life and Solemnity, the damage will take you to zero, but then you can't get poison counters. So this is also an unkillable combo, as long as these two pieces stay and play together. This might KO some decks on its own, and then we also have access to actually win the game. And in the spirit of the challenge, winning the game with access of mortality, I have only one destiny spinner in the main deck. There's traditionally three or more. My Emrakul is in the sideboard, just kind of there for mill, or if somebody has a way through our greater oromancies. That's frequently in main decks as well, because Sanctum Weaver can easily cast it. Also stops you from decking yourself when you're looping Enchantress stuff. When you have 
three or four enchantress effects in play, it's pretty easy to deck yourself by accident. But Emrakul's in the sideboard. Only one Destiny Spinner. My win condition really is triggering Axis of Mortality. The sideboard is pretty normal stuff. Some more situational enchantments that aren't going to be good against every deck. Some forces, some endurances, and then... I borrowed some tech from a list that I found, a five, recent 5-1 enchantment list. Test of Talents, very cool to play counter spells in your base green white deck. And this is the type of card that just BTFOs the Cascade decks because you counter their Living End and get the rest of them. Counter their Rhinos and get the rest of them. You know what I'm saying. Also, if you, get, if you happen to get paired into some Maniac who has like Fracturing Gust or access to something like that in their deck, Having an actual counter spell to fight it gives you something that a lot of the, the non-blue enchantment decks don't have. Pretty excited about that tech. And then Lavinia is also mostly here for Cascade. That's our Chalice of the Void, but it's also a creature. And that's what we got here. It is five color enchantress. I guess there's four colors. We're not actually... Nope, I added a black card. We are the full five color spread here. Five color enchantress. The only actual win condition is one Destiny Spinner or Axis of Mortality or just hard locking an opponent and hoping they concede. Let's do it. This is Axis of Mortality Enchantress from Let Game. Three for One Trading is having a spring sale from April 5th to April 11th, 2023. All their high end singles, full sets, and out of print sealed product is 5% off with free worldwide shipping on orders over 341 euros, which is approximately $375. Their online store has a fantastic selection of high end magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old school players. Use my code BNR0423 to get the 5% discount and free worldwide shipping. Scan the QR code or click on the link in the video description to check out shop3 for one tradingcom I'm on the draw in round one, and I'm going to keep this in. It's got land, abundant growth, I'm on the draw, I see three cards before I miss a land drop, and land number two gets it going. Misty Rainforest from the opponent. Stomping ground, okay. Where are we going with this? Going to Rhino Town. Gotcha. Missed on the first one here. Snow covered forest. I might as well get a basic. It all goes to the same place. Uh oh. Two out of three misses here. All right, deck. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> Okie dokie, artichokies. We've got another shot. Didn't get fire iced. Tilt, 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 tilt. I'm off it. I hate magic. Okay, um, I'm going to discard one of the Sithises, or one of the, one of the Sanctum Weavers, probably. Oh, you're missing land drops, too. Please, deck. There's 20 lands in this deck. This is the fifth card I'm looking at. Okay, we got there. It's a miracle. I don't have high hopes for any of my stuff staying in play like they kept this hand based on something i expect a fire ice or a brazen borrower here but at least i'm playing the game now i'm presenting game objects i guess i should have let on oromancy huh but that's other enchantments i guess that's still good i don't know I mean, they didn't have it so upsides here first can of rhinos arrives and i get a turn to do stuff these or i guess they could fury Maybe just don't. Playline Binding. This does not make your land into all things. It just gives it the ability to tap for colors. I think I got to go for Sanctum Weaver here. That's my only way out of this. Come on, land. Okay, so... I need... I mean, they didn't Brazen Bar or Fire Ice last turn when the mana was just free, so... Either real chance they don't have it, or... They're saving a Force of Negation, or they were waiting on Fury to really punish me. Oh, yep. There it is. Okay, I mean, I can draw a land and play Phyrexian on life this turn, and then stick Solemnity the following turn, and actually be chillin'. Land, please. Give it to me. 
Uh, all right. That was a disappointing outcome. 17 cards into my deck right now with two lanes. Okay, well, there's that. Test of Talents and Lavinia come in. I'm breaking in all the Test of Talents and Lavinias, which are specifically what this is for. I'm going to cut Leyline Binding and Blood Moon. They are themselves a Blood Moon deck. So having my own is not going to blow them out. And if they play theirs, Leyline Binding doesn't work. Then I'm going to cut the Anthonices as well. I think I just need to go over the top and prison up against this deck rather than try to answer the Rhinos one for one. Uh, zero lander. Okay. Mulligan. I'm going to keep this hand and put on the nice on the bottom. The chainsaws just kicked back up. I'm sorry if you hear that behind me. Just a little land go action, getting Sterling Grove into play. Sorry for the gaps. I'm trying to work around the chainsaws here. Okay, if I draw land here, I can abundant growth and still hold up test of talents. I think I have to hold up test. It looks like they're going to ice me, though. Okay, I am getting iced. I drew a horizon canopy, which I'm going to use to put my abundant growth on my forest. That was a really good ice, though. Now I can't test of talents them. I'm going to have to unlife. Here's the shardless agent. Yep, sure would be great to remove all those from your deck. But cool thing is I have this... Uh, Uncounterable, or not uncounterable, but Shroud, Phyrexian on life. Surprise. And Phyrexian on life, if you've never seen this card in a situation where the board is just being played to, they have to deal at least 17 damage to me and then deal another 10. Which means I have this whole turn cycle to do other stuff if I want to. See this and Bloodfast. Okay, I'll start with Sithis, and then I'll play Bloodfast, gain a life draw card. If they have double Brazen Borrower, or Brazen Borrower plus Force of Vigor here, that'll work. But I'm just going to hope they don't have those things. Uh-oh, man is being tapped. <laughs> We're so dead. All right. Well, that's that, folks. And the Rhinos Trample. I can't stay above zero life if I wanted to this turn. So we're going to be sent to negative three and then the other brazen bar. OK, yeah, the other option was leave up test of talents. Maybe I'm supposed to do that, but it just felt like I was not winning the game if I didn't get Sithis into play. I guess I didn't need blood fast if I play Sithis. But I drew Abundant Growth off of the Bloodfast. I didn't know I would have additional velocity next turn. And I didn't actually have three turns to figure this out because they have enough power that they can attack me to negative, then attack me for lethal poison on the following turn. Just bang, bang. Ten is a lot of power, it turns out. Miss Landrop game one, a very good ice game two, and we lost to the Tempo deck. No surprise. On to the next one. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the play. And I don't know, this feels like a trap, but it also feels like I'm supposed to be keeping these hands. I've learned nothing. I'm in. This one actually has two mana. Like, I do have a turn two sit this year. Let's party. I could even lead on Oromancy this game, like maybe I should have done in the previous round. But I'm going to get basic forest and sprawl for white onto it. There is a white. A polluted delta from the opponent. Dragon's Rage Channeler, okay. I'm definitely playing Greater Oromancy then. This deck has so many lightning bolts in it that I can't rely on this. Not on our own. They have way more lightning bolts than they have counter spells. I guess if you count Spell Pierce. But this doesn't count Spell Pierce, so it doesn't matter. Oh, this is tempting. 
I think I'm actually supposed to play Presence here, and I don't think it's particularly close. What are the colors of the cards in my deck? Do I need double green or double white is the question. I could just get Temple Garden, take my two. That's probably the safest way to do this. Okay, Enchantress's Presence. This will outmuscle counter spells and lightning bolts alike as long as my life total holds up, which Unlife is here for. Because they could have like Brazen Borrower and slow me down a little. But that's that's not even really good for their plan. They did achieve Delirium. I'd love to draw a land right now so I can go Greater Ormancy into Sithis. They are representing Spell Pierce. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there's that. I'm going to lead on Oromancy. I think this one's more important to resolve. Or more important to take my shot on. Cool. It's in. Unfortunately, missed on a one drop or a land. But this is a reasonable spot. One on life can hold up against a one DRC for a long time. And I ripped the Solemnity, so they're going to need counter spells to beat me. They left their card on top. That's scary. Sandler did three. Are we getting murked? What's going on here? Pass the turn. I smell a counter spell, which is fine because I have two copies of the card I actually care about. Do I play out the hall and does it matter? Uh, yeah, I play out the hall because if I draw it on the ice or abundant growth, I'm going to want to cast it. Phyrexian on life. Totally normal enchantress gamer. Drew a second enchantress's presence. It's like something's happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. It is counterspell. That was pretty clear after all. Okay, pass the turn. I suspect that's the card they kept on top. The counterspell is just really good in this spot because they can't beat the board. They have to beat the stack while reducing my life total. Expressive iteration. Build unholy heat. Good call. That's not going to help you here. A land would be great because then I could set this into unlife. If they're cracking. If they jam Murktide here, Unlife gives me two turns. Oh, come on, land. Let's get this to this and get the engine going. Murktide region has resolved. And on thin ice, get out of my game. Okay. Now I can see this, exile Murktide, and really get the engine going. I think this is better than Unlife here. Oh, there's the Axis. You're in trouble now. On the ice on my forest. Gain life, draw two cards. Chantress business now. Murktide Regent, get out. Missed on all my lands here. There's a lot of lands to miss on, but it's all right. And pass the turn. I'm at eight. I'm a little nervous not having dropped on life, but clearing the Murktide was a big deal. Petty theft targeting Greater Oromancy. Okay. So they're going to bolt to this this turn. Which is fine, because that was a distraction anyway. Unless they bolt me out, which they didn't need to clear Oromancy to do that. Okay. He did my Sithis. If only it was a legendary creature that I had more copies of. Bona fide. And they just milled a spell pierce. Which is interesting, because I've been gated on mana for this whole game. One, two, three, four. I am going to play Oseju Who Endures as a land. Now I'm ahead of spell pierce. And I can play Phyrexian on life. I'm going to do that first. I think it's more important that this doesn't get spell pierced than anything else that's going on here. Now I can replay Oromancy. If they pierce this, they've already used their Brazen Borrower. Cool. We're in business. And I'm not going to need Argwell's Bloodfast this game. They've done a really good job just reducing my life total all on their own. Now i got to draw the land for Axis. Ledger Shredder's in. And if they can't deal five to me this turn, that's a whole extra turn I get. They would have to exile land lightning bolt to deal five to me right now. Because Phyrexian on life damage doesn't like trample. I guess there's I don't have other language to describe that. Like if I'm at one actual life and they attack me for 11, I go to negative 10 and then the poison counter start on the next damage. They have to get me to zero. So if they can't deal five this turn, then we're just back at the top. 
for a full turn of damage. They could bolt me pre-combat. That resets it. I drew Temple Garden, which I can no longer or I can chuck in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god. I have exactly enough life to shock this in, according to the rules. And I'm doing it. I'm at zero, which might be a little risky. <laughs> but this is what we came here for. Grab that screenshot real quick and hope they don't have another brazen two brazen borrowers. <laughs> we got the LOL on the chat. You better believe it. Okay. Uh, I'm being lightning bolted. Oh no. Are they going to actually deal 10 to me this turn? Uh, they are conniving before they surveil. Yeah, if they can 10 me here, they are going to win. Because I put myself under the unlife. Unfortunately, Temple Garden was the draw. So this is 3, 6. A belt is only 9... Oh, wait, I have three on me already. Okay, a bolt kills me. Uh, Dash Ragavan also kills me. No! I tried so hard and got so far. Uh, they're going to combat. It's not Ragavan. Okay, uh, do you have another lightning bolt? Is my question. This is bullshit. Uh, I guess I was supposed to go for Solemnity, not Axis. I just got so excited. Solemnity, I think, is a genuine hard luck. <laughs> All right, uh... I've died in service of the meme. Yeah, I actually don't think they could beat Solemnity there ever. Because they've already used a borrower, and all my things have Shroud, and they didn't have a counterspell. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was just bad. I'm going to bring in Endurance, just as a booty that interacts with them in a meaningful way. I don't think this is a Test of Talents matchup. That's just not really what this is about. On the Ice and Leyline Binding, absolutely. Not really a Blood Moon matchup. I think I'm looking at Bloodfast, or you cut a Sithis because you think you can answer them, or is that a reason to play more Sithis? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to cut a Sithis. Could be Sanctum Weaver. Yeah, I think this deck it just has to reduce my life total as part of its plan, so I don't need my own thing to do that. I can't keep this one. I will keep the crap out of this one. And if I have Sterling Grove and Oromancy, then all my enchantments are untouchable. Do I want to just find Unlife later? Or is Resolving turn to Unlife? I'm not doing that anyway. I'll find Unlife later. Going to be Basic Forest and then Sprawl for White. Yeah, I was really chasing getting one Axis kill on the board so we could check that off and then play normal for the rest of the league. But one Solemnity Lock... And I guess the Solemnity Lock would have guaranteed an Axis kill on the following turn. Okay. I'm gonna fetch for another Forest. I'm gonna make Green White and then put Abundant Growth on the Untapped Forest with a White Floating. This is in case I find an answer to Ragavan, which I did not. And I'll play Sterling Grove. This Ragavan is kind of annoying, as it tends to be. This is where they take my on life, and then I can't win. Topia Sprawl. That can only go on a forest. That's good news. That was abundant growth. They could have actually just gotten card advantage, but that was a brick. They do have a board full of creatures. I'm going to need something to do quickly here. There goes a Blood Moon off the Ledger Shredder. I think Sithis is my best draw right now. The second Oromancy. All right, I'll play one of them. And I'm just going to play Stomping Ground Tap. Get that into play when it doesn't hurt. I can tutor an enchantment with Sterling Grove this turn, but I don't think it's time yet. I could have fetched planes and played a second Oromancy, but I didn't want to trigger Shredder. <laughs> Another moon discarded. Yeah, they had a lot of those against me with all my basic lands and enchantments that make mana. Precious Bobble, more... That gives them Delirium. They had the, the Turbo, the Fast Draw here. Sometimes they have Counterspell, EI Draws. Sometimes they have three creatures on turn two draws. Ragavan hit and took a Leyline Binding. They can't cast that, and there's nothing to target if they could. I am disappointed to lose it, though. Okay, deck. Something helpful, maybe? Oh. If I Tutor Sithis now... 
I could draw it with Horizon Canopy. That would be basically my whole turn. I think I have to just draw a card. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Literally dead on board. <laughs> They're going to counter this, but they don't even need to. Okay, I got a little too spicy for my britches in game one. I think Solemnity would have actually just hard locked this deck. And... What would they have to do? They would have to, like, deck me with Ragavan? Yeah. Tough beats. Okay. The meme dream cost us a game. I will tighten up for the rest of the league. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting Commander events. It features easy-to-create event registration for four-player Swiss-structured tournaments. Event management has never been so simple, and it's web-based, so there's no downloads required. You can get access for just $5 at eminence.events. subscribe on the draw for round three. I have another one of these one landers that does a bunch of enchantment stuff. I'm going to keep it. I think you just, this is the price of doing business when you build a deck like this. Oh, good. Draw me a land, preferably a basic. No love. Uh, Phyrexian on life revealed. Well, they know that's coming. Is it more important to draw a card or to ramp right now? I think it's ramp. And I name green. I'm just going to sprawl for green here. I don't want the Great Rebel. How about a land? All right, we drew a rising canopy. Fuck me. All right, found another land. Cool. We're in business. What do I do? Probably play on life. So without the solemnity, that doesn't matter. I think I'm going to abundant growth my forest and play Sanctum Weaver this turn. This takes a bunch of damage from Eidolon, but I'm just hoping that that doesn't matter. Or I can get ahead of it. Ooh, so this is a big game. Does that change anything? Does that mean I want to lead on Oromancy? So they can't bolt me? But if they bolt Sithis, and by me I mean Sithis, they can always bolt me. I think I need to Sanctum Weaver and just try to go really big next turn. That is, if they can't just 9 me, which is probably really easy from their hand. Sanctum Weaver on top. They don't think I can block here. No, I just have to play the game. Uh, there's a very good chance that two of their spells deal five damage here, but I'm about to go into the Unlife. I guess I'm not really going to go into the Unlife because they have Eidolon. Okay, any spell I cast puts me into Bolt range. Except for Leyline Binding. I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. This costs four. Wild shit. I'm going to start with Sithis. If they got instance, I'm dead. I think I had a major lack of respect for Eidolon of the Great Rebel this game. I'm going to play my Horizon Canopy. Then I'll play Phyrexian on life. They gain a life when I cast it. Their triggers resolve first, so I'm at one. <laughs> Just literally dead to anything. Oh, wow. And it's even skull crack. Yeah, you got me. Okay. Probably should have unlifed last turn. I let that Eidolon do way too much. Stupid burn. Course of Vigor kills Eidolon. Test of Talents can counter. Just random stray lightning bolts. Blood Moon for sure. We're 0 for 3 on that one being relevant. Test of Talents, Test of Talents. I'm not going to need Blood Fast help to lower my life total in this matchup. Solemnity on life is the combo here. Burn could have like wear tear, so I guess I should probably leave in some Oromancies. Yeah, I'll just do a couple test of talents and otherwise leave it alone. Okay, a removal spell and I get to ramp. I'm going to keep. I'm going to fetch a green and I'm going to sprawl for white. Then just tapping this land next turn, I get to go on the ice, abundant growth and play Rafine's Tower Tapped. If those are all desirable things. Okay, didn't need at least one of them. Sage you sweet, that kills Eidolon. Mm -hmm. One in growth. White floating. Hey, I get to use my white. Mm -hmm. If I play Besage you as a land, which I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Sanctum Weaver, too good, mm -hmm. let's go. Go ahead, bolt it. That's a bolt that's not getting pointed at me. Tap Sacred Foundry at the end step. I'm worried about Searing Blaze now, and not much else. Mm -hmm. Lightning Helix, yeah, that's fine. It's damage I didn't take. And I'm untapping with Test of Talents available. 
gonna play Rafine's Tower and I'm gonna put Abundant Growth on the Seiju. Presence, cool. All right, engine's online. I can counter a spell, I can kill a creature, I can start drawing cards. I'm still at 19 life going into turn three. You're gonna like Sulk Fear Vortex me, Eidolon. I can defeat that. Another ice. Is drawing a card worth two life here? I think so, but I always think so. I'll do horrible things to draw a card. It's true. I'm gonna haunt the nice. I get to draw a card. I have to take two. Get rid of this Eidolon and pass the turn. Swifty. Please don't 15 me. It's a lot of creatures. Deck, gas me up here. Is there an incentive to put Sanctum Weaver on top right now? If I go one, two, all, I would have land. And this forest makes two. One, two, three. I would be able to Aunt the Nice and Sanctum Weaver. And I'd have Sanctum Weaver in play. And I draw two cards. That sounds pretty good, actually. Sanctum Weaver to the top of my deck. Draw for turn. Up for white, leave a white floating on thin ice. Clear the Eidolon. Draw a card. Sanctum Weaver, draw a card. So this, okay. Gotta, gotta be alive and I can start drawing lots of cards next turn. I might have to block. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> it does commit them to a spell now if they want to beat this thing in combat. And I'm not going to just randomly take four from a Swiss Deer. All of which are things I enjoy. So the Swift Spear would have put me to six. Skull Crack is a beating, but I can counter it. Okay, the green white from the first land makes Sithis for another Sithis. Probably not helpful, but we'll see. I'm going to use Beseju to put Abundant Growth on Hall of Heliod. Start gaining life, drawing lots of cards. I have the Test of Talents for a Skull Crack. Which they do have. Blue Source coming in clutch. Their hand is Roiling Vortex and Skewer. Hey, Skull Cracks are out of the deck. Do they have any land destruction or enchantment destruction? Searing Blaze and Searing Blood both in the deck. Yuck. No wear tears. Okay, counter that. Start. Gaining life drawing cards. Oh, there's Solemnity. We're halfway there. Leyline Binding. Okay. Leyline Binding. I have four types right now. I'm going to save the Leyline Binding for the Roiling Vortex because I would like to keep gaining life this game. I have a backup set this year. The Chainsaws are going crazy right now. They draw a land. That's great. Roiling Vortex is annoying, but I have the answer. I will block with Sithis. I just have more of that. It's fine. Oh, wow, they're good. They've had quite enough. Onto the sideboard. That game brought to you by Test of Talents. Do I want to make room for the third? An Enchantress's presence is kind of expensive, but it is the thing that does what it does. Seeing not only all their Searing Blazes, but also Searing Blood in the deck kind of makes me worried about Sanctum Weaver a little bit. I think I'm just going to go like this. In multiple Sithis, a redraw. No removal yet. I am going to keep this, though. Destiny Spinner is the beefy creature in my deck, so I can put that in front of a Goblin Guide if I have to. Which they do, of course, have. And it revealed Utopia Sprawl. Okay, I'm going to ramp instead of redrawing here. This lets me do two things next turn. Forest Sprawl on white. Yeah, this way next turn I can at least see this plus Abundant Growth, gain a life draw card. Really hope they don't idle on. That's the card that I'm most worried about right now. Just like cast some burn spells, please. Skewer, cool. Nice. Alrighty, I'm going to fetch for a basic forest first, so they can't bolt my Sithis in response to a fetch land. Here she is, and then we're going to Abundant Growth. 
And this is a cast trigger, so even if they kill to this, I get to gain my life. There's Solemnity. That's the one of in my combo suite. I have four on life's, one Solemnity. Oh god, they path to exile, they're gonna ramp me. Deal. Planes into play. Alright, just gotta hope I'm not dead. They have three cards in their hand. And three cards can deal 10 damage in this deck. But not with three mana, I don't think. Alright, so this brings us home. Fetch for the other basic planes and hope they don't bolt, bolt, bolt in response. Green, white, Sithis, green, white, Destiny Spinner. Spinner can, can at least block. That's what I'm going to go with. Got the Skull Crack, the two of Skull Crack that we know is in their deck. All right, this is scary now. I'm at six. I didn't even use that mana that I just fetched for, so if they bolt bolt here, I could have been at seven. That was pretty bad. Inspiring Vantage. Okay, there's not one card in their deck that deals six, and I can block a Goblin Guide. Let's go. Is your last card in hand the other Skull Crack? Or do I get to gain life? Oh, it doesn't matter. Nice. Okay. We're finding a path out of this. There's no more lands that I'm happy to fetch here. If I go one, two, three, I can go Sancta or Oromancy, then Sanctum Weaver. Oh, can I do this and hold up the counter spell? I'm going to start with Sanctum Weaver. Start gaining life. Get just out of reach here. If I shock in Stomping Ground, I'm at five, but I get to play Oromancy. I go back up to six and I'm holding the counter spell. This is worth doing. Oromancy. Best of talents, baby. Hold the fort. Okay, passing the turn. They know what I'm representing because it BTFO'd them last game. They're probably going to draw with Canyon here. Oh, shit. They Boris charmed me. I thought they were just... <laughs> I don't know what I thought was just going to happen, but I was not ready. I just clicked through the Boros charm. What a counter that. Best of talents on this Rift Bolt from hand. Which means I'm going to untap with an uncontested Sithis and Sanctum Weaver. I should be able to gain life out of range here. Start with a Presence. Then I can play... Can I get the whole combo into play right now? I go Green, White, Sterling Grove. Draw two cards. Utopia Sprawl. Only pays for itself if I fetch Shock. That's risky. Oh, I can Sanctum Weaver, so it does pay for itself. Never mind. Um, Sanctum Weaver is good for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 right now. My god. This should be good for the combo. I go... I make white. Yeah, I make white. Sex Sterling Grove. Yeah, okay, we're good. Tutor up Phyrexian on life. Then play Solemnity. <laughs> yeah, they're good. All right, we beat Burn, and we did. We didn't really need it. I think we would have beat them with anything here, but we did technically assemble on Life Solemnity this turn. Let's go. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. Okay, folks, sorry about that round three. The chainsaws were much worse than I thought they were. I took the time to check it on my editor after recording, and yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty bad. Luckily, it was just burn, and you can watch that one with the sound off. Easy game. The chainsaw people have gone home. It's several hours later here in real life. I'm going to keep this hand. This hand can turn to a one-mana leyline binding if I fetch... Rafine's Tower and Stomping Ground. Or I can just cast Sithis and curve into Presence and see where things go. But I'm going to lead on Verdant Catacombs because that can get the Esper Land without too much of a loss. Windswept Teeth can get all my basics. Opponent Mold to 5. Let's see what they're cooking with. Ooh, it's a Sea from Coast strategy. Are we the Ad Nauseam type or the Hammer with a Splash type? 
Looking like Hammer with a Splash to me. Esper Sentinel. Bummer. I guess I can still shock in if I don't want to give them a card. Yeah, the Leyline Binding will probably save me two life anyway. Do I think they're going to hammer me right now? I could play Sithis. And then my Leyline Binding is even better next turn, and I don't play into Esper Sentinel. They have two cards left. I'm just going to play Sithis. If their two remaining cards are Sigarda's Aid and Hammer, that's still only 11 damage, and I can Leyline Bind it next turn and draw a card. This is not a big deal. The old Rafine's Tower basic forest to this start. Exactly what everyone expects. Ink Moth Nexus. Okay, Sigarda's Aid. Now Ink Moth Nexus is a real thing. On the nice, that's nice. Okay. I can... Ooh, I only have one white mana, though. This might be trickier than I want it to be. Yeah, I can't actually exile the thing I'm worried about, which is Ink Moth Nexus, so I'm just going to pass with Leyline Binding available. They would have to be holding Hammer and draw Blacksmith Skill, or vice versa. I have to assume their one card in hand is good, because they kept the hand, but the other card is full random off the top of the deck. Ginger Brute, okay. Now I'm good. Oh wow, they're empty. All right, cool. All right, maybe I gave them too much credit for keeping their hand. They're just going to collect their one poison here. That's fine. I think I'm going to bind Sigarda's Aid in the end step. Yeah, that takes a lot of pressure off of what I need to be worried about. Draws me a card, gains me a life. I can pay for Esper Sentinel. This feels crazy. Welcome to modern. <laughs> Look at this mana base. Everyone's just binding ley lines out here. Pay the one. Leyline Binding, get in, clear the Sigarda's Aid. I think I'm safe to just invest in an Enchantress's Presence here and pay the one. I don't think there is a single card in the deck that can present Hammer plus Equip all right now. The next turn I can Onthan Ice the whoever is giving me problems, probably Esper Sentinel, and then just go off. Also Solemnity just straight up bricks the Ink Moth Nexus. Already has Infect, don't even need on life. You're still Paladin? Okay. This is what I mean. Even one of the spicier draws in their deck, like that one, doesn't present lethal. If they had even one other card in hand, I would have been worried about it, but currently I'm not. And that's a great target for On Thin Ice. Now, on easy mode with that one. Oh, on life is here. Nice. Okay. How do I want to do this? I probably want to fetch first to get a land out of my deck. Do I want green or white here? Green lets me sprawl. Yeah, I'll get another forest. And then I have to pay the troll toll on Esper Sentinel, then the rest of the hand unlocks. And I'll pay that with the stomping ground? Or maybe with the planes? I think I need white more than I need green. My hand is all white right now. Okay, yeah, I'll use the green. And draw two cards, gain life. There's Bloodfast. I already have a black source, don't need to worry about that. And then white on thin ice. Draw two cards, clear the pally. Another on thin ice. I think we know where my opponent is, and the answer is on thin ice. I can even abundant growth draw three cards with the white still floating. Let's go. Alright, I ran out of green at the very end, and Sanctum Weaver is the card I would cast if I could here. I could have Abundant Growth the Rafine's Tower just in case, but that felt like a spew at the time. Maybe I'll just blood fast here. Not that cards are a problem for me. Or I could just put Esper Sentinel on Thin Ice. I think that's reasonable. That card is mildly disruptive to me. And I drew Besaju. And I have a Legend, but I don't have green. All right, I'll deal with that next turn. Cool. Big discards. A 23 life and two poison. Horizon Canopy, Burden Catacombs, and Windswept Teeth can all get out. I don't need two on lifes. Yeah, I don't need two on lifes. I'll just drop one of those and keep my Windswept Teeth. I probably don't need three Sithis either. There's a lot of things I could have discarded there. Yeah, they played a land. Good stuff. 
I guess they don't want their one guaranteed damage off Ginger Brute. And it's my turn again. The fourth Sid is okay. And at least they can trip. I'm going to start with Sanctum Weaver. I don't really want to drop on life if I'm not ready to protect it. And now I am. I have Sterling Grove and Oromancy. Green. I guess I should use the basic forest. Green. White. Rafine's Tower taps for fewer colors than Lane's does. That was meant to be Sterling Grove, but I clicked on the wrong one. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Rack my fetch. Temple Garden. My life total is not a problem right now. I'm just going to get Temple Garden. And then I can get green, white, Sterling Grove in here. I can hold up a Basaju activation and just get all the hooks in next turn. Okay, uh, I'm going to discard two Sivis and Windswept Teeth. I could probably just win with Destiny Spinner next turn, but I'm going to try to meme out here. If they let me play it out. I think it's reasonable for them to concede here. <laughs> yep, and they did. Bummer. Let me do it. Okay, against Hammer. Force of Vigor. Clearly, this is a matchup this is for. Stony Silence. Interesting. They don't do a lot of activating of artifacts in this deck. They just sort of fly around. Your Steel Paladin does say equip costs zero. Pally doesn't do the equipping itself. And then there's like Springleaf Drum. I think Suppression Field might be weirdly way better than Sony Silence against this particular artifact deck. Does that makes Urza Saga bad? It counters Pure Steel Paladin. I mean, equipping Hammer costs two instead of ten, which is a good deal. Or is it eight? Whatever it costs. Whatever it, fake number that is so big it can't even be counted. Yeah, I think Field is better. And they're on a splash. They're not mono white, so they have fetch lands too. Field and Force. Blood Moon is solid, but Alpine Moon does the same thing with one mana. Because I'm just worried about Ursa Saga. Now I gotta make four cuts. It's awkward because I don't want Bloodfast in the deck. But I also... Don't know that this deck will actually reduce my life total for me if they're on a poison plan. Aunt the Nice, great. Solemnity, reasonable. Leyline Binding. The first of this is just so important. Maybe I don't need Alpine Moon. I just won't do that. And maybe I'll go down to three on life. Four might be too much. Yeah, I'll try it like this. On life is the center of the two combos in my deck. But it also is a card that you don't need multiples of. So maybe just in deck building, there should only be two or three of those. This hand... I'll keep it. Oh no, they're not interested! Wow. Okay. They just don't even want to play this match. And I don't blame them, I'd be scared too. GTFO, on to the last round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play in the final round, playing for a positive record, and I'm into this. It needs an actual Enchantress, but curving Abundant Growth, redraw into Sanctum Weaver, two removal spells, let's go. I like it a lot. I make the obvious turn one play of fixing my mana and drawing a card. It's also fun starting this way because... Every like blink deck, the new Elish Norn Bant deck, some elemental Omnath decks, all start this way. And having Snow Forest even inset Ice Fang Coatl, which could put somebody down the blink path. Not that it really matters, because after their first land drop, I'm going to play Sanctum Weaver, and we're going to be having a different conversation. But I always like when decks just bluff something that's totally not the case. Oh god, it's the mirror. Oh, it's not the mirror. This is worse than the mirror. Never mind. I was going to lead on Sterling Grove to protect Sanctum Weaver, but I'm actually now going to be just Sanctum Weaver, go fast. And this is a deck that almost certainly can't beat the Serenity Lock. Not Serenity, Solemnity. They might have some Besejus in the list. Okay, I'm going to fetch another Basic Forest. I'm going to try to protect my life total here. You never know when things are going to go weird. Utopia Sprawl for white. 
and Sanctum Weaver. And now I have to Sterling Grove myself out of this. This is actually kind of tough if they present a super fast clock, not having an Enchantress, not having A or B to the combo. But this is a deck that's going to reduce my life total if we pop off an Axis. It's our last chance to do it. I sacrificed a, a game with a locked win in an earlier round to try to get an Axis kill on camera, and it didn't work. But this is it. Opponents on the old double horizon canopy start probably doesn't matter. Our life total will matter less than mine. Oh, Griff Spoon, this thing can fly. That's cheating. Come on, Enchantress. Oh, okay. This is actually awesome. Now I can unlife and then wish for Solemnity with the Starling Grove. And we're out of here. Is there a correct way to sequence this? Doesn't matter. The Sanctum Weaver taps for an extra mana. Guess I'll start with Sterling Grove. Get one, two, three, four here. Or Phyrexian on life is in play now. And I guess that's all I'm doing. This will keep me alive for a long time. I actually don't need to Sterling Grove right away because if they do play Boseju, which is the most likely card that this deck could have to bust up what I'm doing, I need my, my pieces to have Shroud. And although I can't Leyline Bind the Bogle, I can Leyline Bind the enchantments that are on the Bogle. No Auras pre-combat. Bringing it in here. Leyline Binding and Aunt Nice are both really good against the Auramancer. Or the Core. What? I don't even know what that card is called. I'm not going to Sterling Grove here. Okay. Mildly wishing I Sterling Grove, but I'm going to draw a card. Come on, Enchantress effect. Give me that Sithis. Abundant growth. I won't complain about that. I'm going to put that on the basic planes. I know it's tapped, but I'm investing in the future here. I'm going to get all my lands where they need to be. Another Sterling Grove. Cool. Now I'm safe to just pop off. I'll have the protected situation here. And Sanctum Weaver can cast Leyline Binding. Even if I had zero land types, I can just tap for seven right now. This is fun. Opponent's probably just going to draw a card. And they did. Interesting, they shocked in Temple Guard in there. Like, do they play? No, Path to Exile doesn't make sense because they would have done on their turn. But oh, there's Beseju. I was right to play around it. Use the information you have, people. This card exists. My opponent's a green deck. Don't get BTFO'd. They break Coronet. Hell yeah. Enjoy. All this life that I will take from you in the near future. I actually don't even know if damage is straight up prevented or or what here. Like when I get my hooks in, I'll grab a solemnity and I'll see if they, they just concede. I don't know. Maybe they can't beat this and they know it. Okay, one shrouded up solemnity for your consideration. And then we're just okay, no, they're good. Then I was going to say, then we're just uh, an axis of mortality away from winning. So that was our win condition. That was technically an axis of mortality win because we don't have any other way to win. We're not going to talk about Destiny Spinner. 50-50 chance that that was technically an axis win. Okay, Bogles. Horse of Vigor. We just haven't had a Blood Moon matchup in this league. I mean, Blood Moon probably would shut them down, but my deck is full of three mana enchantments that shut them down anyway. Pretty tough matchup for them, actually. I was worried when I saw the Bogle, because that's my natural reaction to be worried about Bogles. But I don't think I need to be. On Thin Ice, probably not helpful. Is there other cards I'd rather have in than On Thin Ice? Best of Talents doesn't matter. Suppression Field can make Besaju cost more. But I'm leaving in all of my Shroud effects, the, both Oromancies and the Four Groves, to, out of respect for Besaju. That's like the one thing they can do. And they do have fetch lands and horizon canopy. Maybe suppression field is better than on the nice. Just as literally something versus probably nothing. Though on the nice is a one mana enchantment for velocity reasons. Yeah, I don't think I would pay or play one white draw a card in this deck if I could. Though abundant growth is pretty close to that. But that's draw two cards. 
One white draw a card if certain conditions are met. No thanks. That's not a card I would put in my deck. White players everywhere in shambles. That's how we get card advantage. Conditionally and poorly. Sithis is here to put you on the right track, though. Okie dokie. I will keep my hand. I have to assume my opponent will have more interaction this game than they did in the last. Or at least available in their deck, whether it's in their hand or not. Doesn't matter. And the Axis is here. I'm ready to access them a question. They mold a five tough beats. Temple Garden, Slippery Bogle. You got it. Three cards left in the hand. Temple Garden of my own. I'm going to fetch the Rafine's Tower this turn. I'm holding Bloodfast. Got lots of green sources. Let's see what speed they're coming out at me here. Oh my god. Just a 1-1 one, one Bogle turning sideways. What's in this hand? Enforce a Vigor on a Molda 5 is tough. But light pause, okay. And I just cut all my creature removal. Smart. Okay, Rafine's Tower, get in. Yeah, I forgot about Light Pause. That's like a real card these days. I'm going to play Sanctum Weaver. Invest in success. Sanctum Weaver is my green card I could pitch to Force, but it can also just cast Force if I put it into play now. Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura with a different name than each aura you control and put it onto Light Pause. They can tutor for a 1 or 0 drop aura off of Griff's Boon. This is a good way to recoup from a Mold of 5, though. Scary card. Audacity. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're going off. Me without my Aunt Denysis. Suppression field. Embarrassing. Okay, I am not going to block. I'll take a bunch of damage. Maybe I'll draw on life and then win. That's not on life. Okay. I'm going to fetch another forest this turn. It does Bloodfast even work? One, two. Oh, the Sanctum Weaver is itself an enchantment. That's still a mana short. Okay. I actually need all of my mana in order to force a vigor this turn. Ethereal Armor is definitely one of the targets, and then I have to decide where else I'm going. Daybreak Coronet. Chant creature with another ore attached to it. Uh, I could BTFO, um, and this enters the battlefield. So Daybreak Coronet won't enter the battlefield if I force a vigor, Sentinel's Eyes, and Griff's Boon right now. Is Light Paws lethal? Uh, is it good for five? So it's base two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's still six. Bummer. Okay. That will unfortunately work. They search for Alpha Authority. Enchanted creature has hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. Okay. Guess I'm dead. If I block here, destroy Audacity and Daybreak Coronet, how much do I take? One, two, three. That's actually not bad. Okay, I'll block. Light pause. And. I have to force a Vigor to stay alive and then hope I draw exactly on life to stay alive. Yeah, Audacity is what's giving Trample. Sucks to destroy that, but it's what we got. And Daybreak Coronet. Okay, I go to two. And then I draw on life and then I draw Solemnity and then we get out of here. Right, 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 tilt. All right, we're done. All right, I've made a huge miscalculation. I forgot about light pause. Suppression field, get out of my deck. On thin ice, come back into my deck. Is there another card to cut to get rid of the get the third on thin ice back in? I think it's blood fast. Sorry, buddy. That card did not pay out the way I hoped it would in this league. Uh, this hand rules. I'm gonna keep it. Opponents on five again. I've been keeping one landers this whole league. Couldn't be me. I think I get basic forest here. I'm going to Utopia Sprawl for the actual ramp. That's more important than fixing. And put white under that thing. Let's go. I hope I draw a land that isn't Beseju, because that's a powerful tool in the matchup. But I will play Beseju for Velocity next turn, if nothing else avails itself. Play Cover Scout, Sanctum Weaver. Okay. I'm going to play Beseju. I'm going to play Sithis. And then I'm going to put Abundant Growth on Beseju and draw two cards. 
and gain a life. There's an unlife. Cool. Good start. Let's see if I get murdered by light paws again. Ethereal armor. Looks like a more traditional Vogel's game plan this time around. I am not going to block this turn. I may consider it in the future. Presence. Okay. I'm going to play Sanctum Weaver first and hope that it draws a land or a one drop. But Sanctum Weaver is the thing that pops me off here. Next turn. Okay. Didn't get there, but I've invested in success. Let's see if it works. Hope they can't make this a 16 power creature this turn. Though double ethereal armor is kind of the way to do that. I will have a shrouded on life in play if I untap here. With all of my resources available. I'm also representing the Seiju, which they may or may not have to respect, but I hope they do. All right, just an attack. No flash auras. Second Bogle, don't care. And Hyena Umbra. Okay, that's fine. They could have pre-combated that for two extra damage. I'm not sure. I I'm not a Bogles player. Maybe they did everything right. Okay. So it's Sterling Grove. Get another enchantment. All right, yeah, Sterling Grove. In a life draw card. Now I just have to do the enchantment math. I have one, two, three, four, five of these things. My life total is not going to matter. So I'm going to fetch. And... I think I still get a planes. I'll get the planes and then one, two, three, four, five. It'll be six if I cast Oromancy. That's enough to unlife and Destiny Spinner. Okay. The Sterling Grove is better than Oromancy, right? Yeah, it's all the same thing plus an Enlightened Tutor. Enchanted creatures don't matter because my creatures are already enchantments. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. And then I'm making white off the Sanctum Weaver anyway, so Oromancy is an extra spell I can cast. Cool. Rexian on life. Wait, can I win right now? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. No, I'm one short. Okay. It'll cost me three to cast this, one to activate Sterling Grove, and three to cast my spell. So I'm, I couldn't quite. I was one mana short of getting the Solemnity immediately. I could just fetch here and let them know it's there. Yeah, I did what I did. Let's go. Solemnity. Lock it up. That's the turn. Are we done? Hellbent Bogle's opponent facing down a no damage combo. With Shroud. I even have Force of Vigor back up. I was hoping they would cast exactly that spell this turn. We get the disgusting blowout on the way out here. Coronet fizzles because it's an illegal target. They get nothing. And now we're done. I hope they play it out. Just you know, play to your outs. Never concede. Read Duke, right? The Read Duke never concede mentality. I hope they do that. And then I can tutor for axis of mortality and go nuts. I'll shock in Temple Garden. I actually want my life total to reduce now. I should lead on Enchantress's presence. Just get more cards. These cards are great. I might actually have to win this game with Destiny Spinner. I don't know that they could produce enough damage for me to end up at zero life and I boarded out the blood fast spinner this is my lethal threat and then make white which is good for solemnity good for a second oromancy good for an on life or I could leyline bind I don't want a leyline bind because I kind of want them to keep pushing for damage I should probably stop casting enchantments then, if that's what I want out of life. And I'm not going to on the ice. I'm going to pass the turn and discard this extra enchantress's presence and land. Or I, I don't need... only need one of those. I'll keep the spell. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That means I can make three of my lands into... 4-4, four, four, or 12-12's next turn. All that glitters. Yes, please keep attacking. I might not kill them next turn, even if I can. I want to get the Axis kill. And I can definitely kill them right now. They left themselves dead on board. A Temple Garden. Get in there. 30 cards in my deck. Gonna Abundant Growth this forest. 
And I'm actually at like kind of real risk of decking myself before I find the thing or before they deal nine damage to me. I'm slightly concerned about this. And I guess I could find the thing easily. One, two, three, four. Green, white. I'll play another Sterling Grove. Oh, there's Axis. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, I have lethal. I'm not going to keep farting around here. Does this untap the land? Target land? No, okay. Green. Wake this up. All right. I am not going to poop around here. Let's just make my opponent dead. If I thought I could just do this easily next turn. All right, yeah, they conceded. Positive record. If I thought I could just easily access the next turn, if I was at like three instead of nine, I would let them attack me and then get the, the kill, but that would have taken a long time for them to find the damage. They were just not even functioning. Okay, so I think what we mostly just saw in this league was the Phyrexian on life solemnity lock in an enchantress shell. There was only one opportunity for an access of mortality kill and it would have been better as a Solemnity kill. Argyle's Bloodfast does not drain your life fast enough. Or at least this is not the kind of thing you want. I'm just going to scry fall search real quick. Pay one life, legal in modern. I'm just looking for kind of unbound ways to pay life. Like all of these ones that just pay some life. I mean, Bolas' Citadel is a funny answer. But you could win a thousand ways if that was it. Carrion Howler. I'm not putting that in my deck, but you can pay as much life as you want into that one. Krovax Bouncing and Returning. I did see this when I was doing my homework for the brew, but I didn't think the effect mattered in the format, and paying six to lose two life is not a good deal. I guess once it's in play, you can spam activations, hold priority, and just pay 20. But you need an even number of life for this because you can't pay life you don't have. Even if you have a, like an on-life effect in play, the game won't let you pay two life if you only have one. So, Krovax, getting closer. I did look at Defiler Faith too, but it doesn't kill you enough. You can only reduce the Phyrexian mana of your white spells once. Erebos was another greed effect that I saw in my original look. Just going down the list here. Kuro Pit Lord is a thing. There's also Villas Broker of Blood that can pay life. I think Villas costs a black to do that, though. Kuro, at 9 mana, what are we even doing anymore? This is what Brewing Dex looks like, by the way. It's not sexy. I don't just know every card that exists. I am on Scryfall trying to make the correct advanced search. Nightmare Lash, pay three life. I saw this one too. E equip pay three life as long as you have a creature that can be targeted. But my Enchantress deck has no swamps. I guess it has one with Ravine's Tower. Got me. But my creatures will frequently have Shroud, so I can't even equip if I wanted to. Oh, Plague of Vermin. Starting with you, each player pays any amount of life. That'll get you there. But again, we're at seven mana. I did look at Staff of Completion too. The... Maybe this is better than Argyll's Bloodfast, but Bloodfast is an enchantment you can tutor for. This is just sort of an artifact in your deck. But if you have Sanctum Weaver going, pay the 5 to untap, you can lose a lot of life very quickly. Here. A Wall of Blood. Here we go. Pay 1 life gets plus 1 plus 1. This is Unbound. You can do that as much as you like. Yeah, Villas is a black pay 2 life, so this one can't get you to 0 if you have an even number. And there's a mana investment. Plus, you have to get your 8-drop into play. And then using an 8-mana 8 8-8 8 flying to reduce your life total to 0 to then win the game in a different way seems preposterous. Then Yawgmoth is bound by how many creatures you have. So yeah, it really only is Wall of Blood and that dog thing. The Carrion Howler. That can just, for 0 mana, ask getting the original permanent into play. Just spend all your life. Maybe Bloodfast is the way. If you get the hooks in, you'll find your way there. I would be worried about decking. All of Heliod helps a little bit, but once you have two or three Enchantress effects, if your plan is to then draw 10 to 14 cards, maybe 15 cards, because you've been gaining life with Sithis to get your life total to zero, kind of sus. If your opponent's not cooperating, you're in trouble. Other ways to approach Axis of Mortality. 
The problem with this is it's a six mana enchantment that you then have to untap for. So it has to be in some sort of deck that can control the board in a meaningful way. It has to be in a deck that can get to six mana. It has to be in a deck that can protect its investment in the format defined by Leyline Binding and Poseju and Teferi Time Raveler. Like, you can't just play Death Shadow, Mardu Death Shadow with Axis of Mortality at the top. That just... That deck would be a complete disaster. You could do something like... Orzov or maybe Esper Control with Bolas' Citadel. I think Bolas' Citadel is the most exciting thing that was not explored in this build. Ad Nauseam is a contender as well, but if you resolve Ad Nauseam and your plan is to resolve a 6-drop enchantment, then pass the turn and then hope it worked, you got big problems. But some sort of Orzov or Orzov-adjacent control deck that can put Bolas' Citadel into play at a stable life total and then just rip itself down to nothing... That might be a cool other way to take this. Not that I think this was bad. Obviously, we tucked the thing we wanted to do into an established shell, a multi-format staple shell. And I watered this deck down a lot. Like, Destiny Spinner is the only other way to win a game. Unless we count Sithis beats one at a time, get in there. We didn't count on the power of the concession, the I don't want to play this game anymore Enchantress you win button, which is how we actually won most of our games. But I'm not disappointed in this performance. We had a positive record even after me throwing a game because I was trying to meme for the camera. If you want to play Axis of Mortality, this is a responsible way to do it. If you want to go faster and combo harder, look at Bolas' Citadel. That's my advice to aspiring deck builders out there. As we saw in the Scryfall search, it's not easy to intentionally reduce your life total to zero in the modern format. I'm going to leave this one here. Let Gabe, thank you for the challenge to brew around Axis of Mortality. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.